Hello beautiful bibliophiles, it's Nectaria. I'm really excited to see you. I haven't seen you since my vacation videos, which were three days ago for me, a few seconds ago for you. I had so much fun in that vacation, it was so cool. Uh, there was a lot of us, like a big group of friends, and it was so wholesome and heartwarming. Heartwarming. I can't speak English. But it was super cute and I enjoyed the heck out of it and it was just amazing and uh, I think it was the best thing that has happened to me in 2020 on so far so yeah it was it was a great three days but I haven't talked uh, at all about my reading so far so how is this reading vlog so now I'm gonna talk about what I was reading what I finished recently what I'm about to read so first of all while on vacation I got I got a small things by Aaron Daddy Roy with me and this was what I was reading. I wasn't reading that much because I was with my friends and we were having a lot of fun. But I was reading a bit like uh, in the afternoon, a bit at night. I actually read in the swimming pool which was so cool because one of my friends was like why don't you read in the swimming pool and I literally just got in the pool and I had the book open like standing in front of me. And I was like reading while I was half in the water and it was so much fun. Um, and my friends were like, leave the book and let's play. But like, I was reading a bit. Um, so that was exciting, but I, I didn't read at all. I read like 60 pages of this while on vacation. And now I am 170 pages into this. So I'm almost halfway through. And anyways, point is, I'm really enjoying this so far. Um, I love the writing of it. I think this is definitely a writing uh, book. Like It's one of these books you read for its writing. It's definitely character driven, not plot driven, but it's mostly writing driven. Like It's just about the beautiful, gorgeous descriptions um, and the amazing relatable quotes that are written so poetically. It's like, it's really political and nice. And that's the main reason why I'm enjoying it. It has a lot of characters, a lot of names. I keep forgetting who's who. And also, uh, it goes a bit uh, back and forward in time, which is also a bit confusing. But I'm really enjoying it nonetheless. Also, this is a secondhand book, and I found this cute bookmark someone left in it, which is so cool. Look at this cool design. Anyways, um, so my main thought about this apart from the gorgeous writing, is that this is a perfect recommendation for anyone who's enjoyed 100 Years of Soldier by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, because this is pretty much the same thing, except for the magical realism. This is 100 Years of Soldier without the magical realism, because writing-wise, it's very similar, um, because both books you get this big family, and the history of quite a few generations of that family in great detail and all these events that happened to them and all the ways in which their relationships are getting complex and also their relation to their environment like in A Hundred Years of Solitude even though it's a fictional town in Colombia that it's set in you get a lot of the historical facts about Colombia hidden in the story and the way the characters relate and react to them and this goes uh, the same for India, but you get even more from the history of India in the 20th century. And because there is no magical realism, you get a better sense of the way the characters relate and just get themselves into that. You, you do get a lot of um, the history of India in the 20th century from the book, which I, I think is really cool. So yeah, I think if you liked 100 Years of Solitude, you're going to like this because it's the same. It's gorgeous writing uh, about things you wouldn't expect the writing to be gorgeous. Like there's all these taboo things and all these weird descriptions of things you wouldn't think someone would think of describing. But like they're so cool. They're these like absent-minded, hazy thoughts that you have sometimes. And you're like, who would describe that poetically in a book? But like Arun Dari Roy did and Gabriel Garcia Marquez did. So I think these two books, like if you like the one, you like the other. But enough for the God of Small Things for now. Before I left for vacation, I had just finished my reread of Lolita. This is my second time reading it because I got my own copy. And I wanted to read it again to underline my favorite quotes. 
Quick reminder, if you haven't watched my previous videos, I don't romanticize Lolita, I don't think it's a love story. If anything, it's just the story of a pedophile, uh, the story of the sexual assault of a young girl. There is nothing romantic about it, um, but I think it's very interesting to see how this book has contributed, without wanting it, um, Vladimir Nabokov with this book has contributed to the sexualization of young girls uh, in pop culture and today's society, so if you want to learn more about how that happened, I would recommend the Lolita podcast by Jamie Loftus because it's my favorite podcast of all time, very informative, very educational, so well researched and I'm gonna link it down below because I always want to recommend it to those who either want or want, don't want to read Lolita um, because it's. I think it's a part of the way our culture has sexualized young girls. Anyways, uh, so... With that reminder, uh, I love the writing of this book, so I, I, I wanted my own copy and I wanted to reread it. And also, my plan while rereading this was to look for the 13 Edgar Allan Poe references that this book is supposed to have. Uh, and I got like six or seven of them, and I'm not even sure they all count in those 13 references because they were all about the Annabelle Lee poem of Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, there was like the kingdom by the sea, which uh, in Lloyda was the prince dom by the sea. There was Annabelle Lee kind of being referenced as a, another character in this. So yeah, I don't, I didn't get all of them. I'm gonna search for it on somewhere on the internet, I suppose, and see what I missed. But it was a great reread and I'm glad I chose to do it. Also, who's surprised I broke my book buying ban I had set for the rest of this year while I was on vacation because we got out in the afternoon and we found this book bazaar and I got books. I got two. Albert Camus, is that how you pronounce him? Because I believe this is an author that everyone pronounces differently, which is ridiculous. We should all just, I don't know, pronounce him the French way. I don't know which the French way is. So for now, we'll just go with Albert Camus, okay? I don't know if that's the right way, but we're gonna roll with it. And I've already read The Stranger, if that's the English title, and I really enjoyed it. Like, it was so thought-provoking and just quite mind-bending and cool as in terms of writing. Like, it made you quite uncomfortable, and I like that. So I got The Plague, I think you call this in English? And the fall, I assume you call this in English. Let's go with that. Um, yeah, this is a very short book. This is a bit of a longer book, but I'm excited to get to both. I don't know which one to start with, so if you think I should start with one specifically to get a greater experience out of it, please comment down below. Anyways, of course I broke my book buying ban. I was almost, I was very close to also getting a Dostoevsky, but then I realized my physical TBR is getting out of hand and I shouldn't buy any more books. And also, I'm too young for Dostoevsky, okay? I'm still a kid for Dostoevsky. And yeah, talking about my TBR getting out of hand, I don't know which books to pick up because I also borrowed a bunch of historical books about the Greek Civil War, which I'm really excited to read. Like, I've already started reading some of it and it's very informative. And I'm glad to be reading this. And I already have a huge physical TBR and I don't know what I'm doing with my reading life. I don't know what to do. Oh my gosh. Anyways, I'll update you when I finish God of Small Things. So, bye till then. Hello beautiful people files. Since the last time I spoke to you, I did finish God of Small Things, which was absolutely gorgeous. I cried twice. Uh, in the second part that I was reading and it was just so beautiful writing wise uh, the plot also unraveled quite beautifully even though it's not that of a plot driven book and we got to know more about the characters but most importantly it just had really cool writing like it was a very kind of lyrically written descriptions of very raw and just honest things that you wouldn't think someone would write poetical just metaphors and descriptions about which I thought was very special and I stand by my statement that if you enjoyed 100 Years of Solitude you're also going to enjoy this because I don't know they gave me very similar vibes apart from the magical realist part and yeah just if you want some really cool writing about things you wouldn't expect there would be 
pool writing. Um, I suggest this if you want this kind of weird thoughts that you think only you make and that are very just surreal and weird. Again, I recommend this and yeah, it was just very beautiful. Um, I it, Did it leave me with a book hangover? It kind of did. And it's definitely going to be in my favorite books of 2021 list. Uh, but I think I'm going to start... I'm not sure because I have so many books on my TBR, but I think I'm going to start a quick reread of Call Me By Your Name so I can move on to Find Me. Not because I don't remember Call Me By Your Name, I just want to reread it because this will be the third summer in a row of me reading Call Me By Your Name because it is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, I think it's a book I've reread the most and I really enjoy it mostly writing-wise and setting-wise, not that much about the love story or the characters or anything. But writing-wise and setting-wise, I really like it. And I really want to revisit that kind of writing and find me. But I'm very reluctant to do so because I don't think I'm going to enjoy it as much because... Okay, the writing might be just as cool, but plot-wise, I don't think there was any reason for this sequel to be done. I feel like Ellie and Oliver's story just finishes up and wraps up quite nicely at the end of Coming By Your Name, so... I don't know why this exists, but did I impulse buy it? Of course I did, and I, I definitely want to read it, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start this one, move on to this one, but we'll see that in another vlog, because now I'm going to thank you so much for being here, for seeing my little video, and I'll see you soon in another one. Thank you so, so much for watching, and we'll talk again soon. Bye!